Well, good morning, and welcome to River Church Online Worship. It's been a crazy week, hasn't it? Uh, we've been dealing with power outages, uh, uh, spotty internet at best, maybe your cell phone hasn't been working, frigid temps. I don't know about you, but uh, where I live, where Lydia and the kids and I live, we have not have we've not had water. Uh, so we've been coming to town to take baths. We have to haul water to flush the toilet. Uh, it's just been a crazy week. I'm glad we're able to actually produce this video this week. I wondered if it was going to happen just because of the lack of electricity and the lack of internet service that that several of us uh, who are part of this whole process, uh, the lack the lack of those resources that we've had. I even have right down here a little uh, little heater. You can't see it, but a little. Uh, space heater keeping me warm as I preach this message. Uh, so anyway, uh, I find it a privilege to be able to come into your home and worship this morning, even in, uh, you know, I guess I'll, I'll call it trying times. Maybe that's an overstatement, but it's been a difficult week. And uh, nonetheless, it's good to jump into God's word. This is uh, another week uh, in, our, in, our, in our series uh, called The Great Exchange, a walk through the stories of the Bible. And each and every week this year, we're looking at the story of the great exchange that God makes with us. And it's, it's in it on every page, uh, in every chapter, in every book uh, of the entire Bible, Old and New Testament, this great exchange where God takes from us our sin and brokenness and he gives us Christ's righteousness. Uh, so it's week seven, and the title of this week is Enemies Become Friends. That's the heart of God. He wants to take a humanity who, who we are at enmity with God. We're, we're, there's stress and there's strife and there's fighting. And he wants to make us now people of peace, uh, friends of the Lord. We are adopted as his children. We used to be his enemies. And so I got another story uh, this week. Uh, it's a fishing story. Uh, many of you know I'm a fly fishing guide. And there aren't many of us. There are a lot of fishing guides down here in South Texas, but, but this little niche, the fly fishing business, not a, not, there, there aren't dozens of us, uh, there are just a few of us. And it's a quite competitive uh, sport, if you will, or, 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 or business, uh, the guide business, specifically fly fishing. And so uh, actually there's a lot of arrogance uh, that goes into being a fly fishing guide. This business, a lot of arrogant I'll even include myself, a lot of arrogant fly fishing guides, uh, confident, confident in themselves. And what I've seen develop over the course of the last 15 years, I used to be, I guess, a younger guide with less confidence, I suppose. And, and, and there used to be a lot of enmity and strife between guides. And we would, we would be very secretive about our techniques or the, the, the places in which we would fish. And there was, we were, it was as though we were enemies, competitors. I mean, I called them my friends, but there was a lot of competition and even um, enmity uh, between us. But what I've seen over the years, at least the softening of my heart as I've grown older as a guide, is, is enemies, if you will, have become friends. <laughs> and, and the older, less intimidated perhaps that I am, I find that, that I work really, really very closely with some good friends who are also really good fly fishing guides. And, and so we used to be enemies, strangers, but now we become friends and we work closely together. It's just a, just a very small picture of, of what the Lord intends to do uh, first in my relationship with him, but then what he intends to do in my relationship with those around me. And I would ask you, who is your enemy today? Who are you at strife with today? Well, as I've said, if you, if you believe the Bible, then, then you are compelled to believe that you, that I, that we were once enemies of the Lord, an enemy of God himself, meaning that, that, that we opposed him and we stood in rebellion against him and, and, and maybe in really simple ways. Like you would say, I'm going to do it my way. If that's still your position as it relates to God, then I suppose you're still an enemy of, of the Lord because, because that's what it means. It means to say, I, I'm going to do it my way. Um, I can save myself. I don't need a savior. Um, I am my own God. I am I'm self-reliant. I am self-righteous. I am completely capable of walking through this, this world on my own. I don't need a God. And that makes you an enemy uh, of the Lord. 
But the story of the Bible, uh, this great exchange, the story of the Bible is, is that God in Christ has now made us friends. He, the, the Christ's work on the cross uh, made us formerly enemies, now friends of the Lord. For 2 Corinthians 5, we look at it every week. It says this, for our sake, God made Jesus to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of of the Lord, the righteousness of God. And so that's the great exchange. He takes our sin, he put it on Christ on the cross. And, and, and friends, Christ dealt with that. On the cross, he dealt with your sin. He dealt with your old reputation. He dealt with, with all the stuff that you think makes you a bad person. He, de he dealt with it on the cross, if you're a child of God. And now he took from you your sin, your brokenness, and he put on you in its place Christ's righteousness, the great exchange. You're now a child of God. We've been, taking, we've been talking about this for several weeks now. How does that then play out in how we deal with our enemies here on earth? Be, there, be they competitors in your business? Be they uh, someone at your school who you just really hate? Uh, be, be it, be it your, your neighbor who you're at odds with, be it some political foe, be it someone who you know who doesn't see life the way you see life and therefore you're, you're always at odds, who's your enemy? And how does God reconciling us to himself, making us at peace with him, how does that relate to your enemies here on, here on the earth? Friends become enemies that's the work of the Lord, and then it becomes our work as Christ followers as well. Well, let's look in the same book, 2 Corinthians, same chapter, chapter 5, uh, the, the, the passage that we just read about, about God exchanging um, our sin for Christ's righteousness. If we go a few verses uh, earlier to verse 16... And then we'll read through the passage that we just read. It says this, so, so we, Christ followers, we have stopped evaluating other, others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old, is, the old life is gone, a new life has begun. Let's stop there for a moment. What happens now? We get new eyes. We get new eyes to, to see spiritually in a way that we used to not be able to see. We used to just be able to see, see our enemies merely through human eyes. And, and we see them with disgust. In fact, Paul says we used to just look at Christ through human eyes and we thought, meh, not much to see there. Not that impressive. Paul is saying that God gives us new eyes, spiritual eyes to see. We see Christ differently now. We see him, ah, he's my savior. He's my Lord. He dealt with my sins on the cross, so I don't have to. I see Christ now through a different set of, set of lenses, through different eyes, spiritual eyes. But what Paul is saying, this is so incredible. You see, now, now when we look at our enemies, when we look at other human beings, we, we see them in a different light as well. We see, we stop evaluating them the way we used to. We see them in a totally different light going on, verse 18. And all of this is, is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task. What is that task of reconciling people to him? For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So, so now we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, get this, come on back to God. Come on back to God. And then here's the verse. We already read it. For God made Christ who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Amen. The word of the Lord. It's said in a slightly different way in Romans 5. It says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, so we've been made uh, we, we've been made uh, at, at peace. We used to be at odds with God. Now we're at peace with God. But then we have also been made into peacemakers, reconcilers. Those who say, come on back to God. In the process, we say, we want to give you a big hug too. We, we, take, we see our enemies being made as now our friends. Okay, now, now but, but, we're supposed to still be in the Old Testament, right? I mean, you know, in this series we've been studying, we're supposed to, we're supposed to uh, I've taken you all the way into the New Testament and Paul's writings. I wonder, is this, is this true in the Old Testament? This great exchange where, where, where God says, I'm going to take enemies and I'm going to make them into friends. I'm going to take people who are, who are at odds with one another and I'm going to make them at peace with one another. I'm going to take a Fly fishing guides who are who are who are competitive and harsh with one another, and I'm going to make them into uh, you know deep friends. Like, is that great exchange, which is which is a picture of the gospel? It, it's it's a picture of what Christ has done in our hearts. Is that message? Is it in the Old Testament? Because we're not going to get to the New Testament in this year long study we're doing. We're not going to get there for a while. Is it in the Old Testament? I'm going to tell you. Of course, it is. Um, it is. Taking a look, a year-long look at the great exchange. And so the last two months, we've moved through the book of Genesis. We've booked, moved through the book of Exodus. Today, let's jump into the book of Leviticus, specifically Leviticus 19. And here's, here's a brief summary of this chapter. Here's what Leviticus 19 emphasizes. It emphasizes a connection between how I relate to others and how I relate to God, how those things are very interwoven, interrelated. Said in, said in other words, um, I cannot separate my religious piety uh, from how I go off on other people, how I mistreat other people in my day in and, and day out life. I can't claim to be a, re- a, religious, a religious person, uh, great piety, look here for, for the man of holiness, I can't, I can't claim that and yet be a guy who's just going off, has enemies who I am not working to make my friends. Leviticus 19, let's, let's read the first verse because it gives a picture of what God is wanting to, to say to the, to, the, to the nation of Israel. Uh, so, so just so you know, in this book, in Leviticus 19, at this point, uh, 19 verse 1 uh, in, in the book of Levit- Leviticus, uh, it's kind of a turning of the page, a new, like, like God's, okay, I'm going to, now I'm going to tell you something new here. Moses, I'm going to tell you something. I want you to tell the people. But it's kind of the beginning of a paragraph, if you will. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all, uh, all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, and here's what I want you to say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Okay, so what God is saying is, you're my children, and I'm holy, and, and therefore I want you to be holy because you're my children. I want you to be like me. If you're going to be my children, if you're going to claim to be my followers, you need to be like me. I'm holy, you be holy. And then he tells them how. And the, the, we're not going to look at the whole chapter, but the whole chapter is about what? Relationships with other human beings. This is how he fleshes out what it means to be holy like I am holy. That's what, that's what God says. He says, I'm going I'm to show you how to do that. And then he talks all about relationships with other people, with our parents, and, and with our co-workers, and, and with our employees, and with our, our professors. And, and then verse 33, he deals with a very specific set of people. Verse 33, he says this, same chapter. Do not take advantage of foreigners who live among you in your land. Treat them like native-born Israelites and love them as you love yourself. Remember that you were once foreigners living in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. All right. right, So so in in these two verses, God specifically says, he speaks about, about foreigners who, who come into the Israelite camp, who, who move into the nation of Israel. And he says, he says you, don't, you, don't, you don't string them up 
uh, and, and you don't burn them at the stake, you, you don't kick them out of the land, you, you, don't, you don't put them in jail. You don't. He says, you, you treat them like native-born Israelites, and you love them as you love yourself. Throughout the Old Testament, Genesis through the book of Malachi, throughout the Old Testament, we see God's heart for what we've talked about here before, what we call the, the quartet of the vulnerable. I didn't coin that phrase, but it's, a, it's an apt phrase. God's heart is for the quartet, the quartet of the vulnerable. And, and who are those? They are the, the orphan. Those are the children, that, the fatherless, the motherless children. The widow. The immigrant. And the poor. Those are the, that's the quartet of the vulnerable. And throughout the Old Testament, as, as God speaks of his heart for love and justice, his heart is always for the quartet of the vulnerable. The, um, the orphan, the widow, the immigrant, and the poor. And the whole of the Old Testament tells us that, that, that if, if I am not intensely concerned for the quartet of the vulnerable, then my heart isn't right. It, it's, it's not like I'm being disobedient. It's that my heart isn't right because I don't feel what God feels because God, God, God is a peacemaker. God is, is about taking enemies and making them his friends. And he calls me to do that. And then specifically in this verse, he's talking about people maybe don't look like me, don't act like me, aren't a part of my group, but I bring them in. I welcome them. I say, you're just you're, you're so welcome here. Again, the, the title of this whole sermon today is, is Enemies Become Friends. God says, I have, I have taken you, my children. You used to be my enemy and I made you my friend. And, and, and now I call you to deal with humankind in the same way. You see enemies and you say, I want to make them my friend. You don't push them away, you, you draw them in. And what is God's reasoning like today, very specifically, Leviticus 19, we're talking about not taking advantage of foreigners, uh, but, but welcoming, them, welcoming them into the camp, saying, you're, you're welcome here. And God's reasoning, he says, uh, it's a different passage, but it's just, just the same thing, just so you see that it's all over the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 10, it says in verse 19, so, so you too must show love to foreigners. And why? It says, for you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. See what, he, what he's doing? God is saying in so many ways, I'm teaching you this message. He says, you were, you, the nation of Israel, you were, you were foreigners uh, in, in the land of Egypt. So you know what it's like to be an outcast. You, you know what that's like. And we could say, we know it. I, I, you know, I know what it's like to be an outcast. You know what it, we say, you, Israelites, you, you know what it's like. And then, and then I brought you out of slavery. I made you people who are not my people. I made you my people. You were, you were once outcast from the kingdom of God and I welcomed you in. And, and then he says to the Israelites, therefore, you know what that's like. So you welcome the foreigners. But, but, but more importantly, because context is a little different for us, God is saying the same thing to us. He's saying, you, my children in 2021, members of River Church, you, you used to be outcasts. God says, not a part of the kingdom of God. And God says, I welcomed you in. And therefore, now you are to do the, the, the same thing. You are to do my work, this gospel work of seeing people who are outcasts, who are foreigners, who are not welcome, who, 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 are, who are disenfranchised. And you are to bring them in. You are to welcome them in. You are to take enemies and make them your friends. The great exchange. God made us his friends. And now we, we are to make friendship with those around us. What does that mean? It means that you, that you are to bring peace where there was once strife. You are to walk into the room where the temperature is, is really high and you're to, you're to bring it down, to, 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 to be an agent of, of good and, and peace and reconciliation. If you, my friend, if you, if you are causing strife 
and dissent in that this, this space that the God has called you to live, whatever that is, your school, your work, your extended family, uh, the club that you're in, the space that you inhabit. If you're causing strife and you're causing dissent, then you are not in alignment with, with God and with, with the purposes of God. And, and that would in, in some ways make you an enemy of the Lord. He is calling you to be an agent of peace. He is calling you to be an agent of reconciliation. So what is the context? Well, when you look at 2020 and now 2021, like so far it feels like a a redo. Um, The context for us has been a fertile context. We have been through the ringer, haven't we? We have, we have had many, many opportunities to be agents of reconciliation, agents of peace, going into a situation where the temperature is really high and we bring it down. We bring peace, calmness, friendship, where there is only strife and enmity. We've had many and various opportunities to do that. How have you done this, this, this year, year and a half? The the political environment, the the pandemic environment, now the uh, now the the uh, this ice out, uh, for for lack of a better words, uh, the lack of power in some cases, the lack of water, the lack of internet. How have you been an agent of reconciliation? Have you just added to the noise and the chaos and the frustration with your comments, with your lack of engagement, maybe even your isolation? Have you, have you done nothing to, to help bring peace? Have you been an agent of reconciliation this year and a half? How, how are you doing? Are you aligned with God's purpose, his heart as it relates to you? The quartet, of, the quartet of the vulnerable, as it relates to your enemies. If we, if we just talk about this week, who around you this week has been cold, without water, without power? Do you know? Do you know how your neighbors are doing? We, the Caulfields, Lydia and I and our kids, We have received several really kind phone calls this week. Um, Hey, you can can come over to our our house and and shower or come over to our house and rest for a while. And that's really the context of today's teaching. Um, How are your neighbors doing? Uh, How are your coworkers that you probably haven't seen in a few days doing? Very specifically, how, how are your enemies doing? Really as simple as that. That is today's, that is today the context of today's passage. The Lord calls us to align ourselves with his purposes. What does that mean? It means that we are to be agents of peace. We are to be reconcilers, seeing that, that, that people who are formerly enemies now become friends, seeing that our enemies now become our friends. The context of today's passage is as simple as that. We are to be agents of peace. Why? Because we were once the unlovely. I myself was once the outcast. And God has called, God God has, has made peace with me. And then he has called me to be a peacemaker. Amen. Here at River Church, we want to become more intentional about how we reconcile the world, our community, our enemies to one another and to ourselves. How can we do that? How can we uh, take this passage and, and, and live it out uh, just right outside these four walls? How can we do that in very practical ways when it comes to the needs in our very neighborhood, the needs up and down this, this, uh, this, this road? Uh, how can we be peacemakers? And so if that is really like tugged at your heart this, this, the, today, and you'd say, you know, I want to I wanna know more. I want to get involved. And send me an email. Uh, send the elders an email. You can send me an email spe- specifically at randy at riverchurchrgv.com. Randy at riverchurchrgv.com. Uh, 
Listen, if you're looking for a way to get connected, even in this time of pandemic, if you're looking for a way to get connected, uh, you can go to our website and there's a way you can hit the connect button and you can get into a Bible study or a small, a small group, a gospel community. Um, even if you're not getting out of the house yet, we, we have some that, that, that function online. Uh, now would be a good time to go to our website and give. You can give uh, virtually, give online. It's it's, the, it's how we keep our doors open because of your good gifts. It's how we continue to minister as a church because you give each and every week. So, so go online, go to the website, uh, riverchurchrgv.com, and do that now. If you're, if you're looking for, to get your questions answered about the church, you go to that same website, riverchurchrgv.com, and all things River Church can be found there. Well, uh, that's a wrap for today. Uh, I, I love you guys. Uh, it's gotten a little warmer now. Stay safe. Uh, check on your neighbors. Love your neighbors. Uh, get out of your own little box and embrace the people around you, even your enemies. And, and the Lord will work in our hearts for good. He'll bring joy not only in our relationships, but he'll bring joy right into our hearts in the process. Love you guys. Have a good day.